So over the course of my years working in the cat world, having conversations with a lot of cat owners and taking care of my own two cats, I've run into a lot of mistakes. And some of those mistakes are more serious than others. So in this video, I wanted to talk about the top seven most significant mistakes you can make with your cat. The first mistake I want to talk about is not cleaning your cat's litter box as often as you should. So I think most of us do a pretty good job of keeping our cat's litter boxes clean, but when those litter duties start to slip, the problems that result can be more serious than you would think. So while most cats will continue using a litter box that is unclean and kind of grosses them out, they'll only go so far. After a day or so, some cats are just going to start using whatever they deem clean enough outside of the litter box. And once that inappropriate elimination habit is established, it can be incredibly difficult to stop. The smell is going to bring your cat back to that spot again and again, and it's incredibly hard to get out and you don't want to allow that to happen. This is why you should always be cleaning your cat's litter box at least once a day. Some cats will prefer once every single time they use the litter box. They would love to have a completely clean box all the time. Now, it can be difficult to accomplish that. There are very real issues that can make it hard to keep the cat's litter box as clean as they would like it. And there are things that you can do to make it easier on yourself. Which brings me to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Whisker, makers of the litter robot. Before cats.com was sponsored by Whisker, I had written numerous reviews of the litter robot and had it in my home for several years. And what I've noticed over that period of time is that my more fastidious cat, Forest, seems to prefer the constant clean of the litter robot. So it has a sensor system that allows it to automatically cycle after each use, giving your cat a clean litter bed virtually all day, every day. I also appreciate that the app gives you usage reports so you don't lose sight of your cat's litter box activity. So if you recognize that you're going to have a hard time keeping the litter box as clean as your cat deserves it to be, the litter robot can be a convenient upgrade. You can learn more about the litter robot by clicking the link in the description and the pinned comment. The second mistake that I want to talk about is understimulating your cat. So a lot of us kind of come into cat ownership thinking sort of in dog terms, and we tend to view in contrast cats as kind of low maintenance pets. But it's important to remember that our cats are intelligent, active creatures who require plenty of stimulation and engagement in their lives. Uh, so when you take one of these keen, active predators and put them into an unengaging, boring environment, that's often when we start encountering many of these behavioral issues that send cats back to shelters. So instead of leaving your cat kind of up to their own devices in an unentertaining environment, you want to fill it with things to climb, to scratch, to hunt. You want to offer plenty of opportunities for enriching activities, and things that keep your cat's mind and body engaged. The third mistake I want to talk about is feeding your cat too much food. So it's estimated that over half of all cats in the United States are overweight or obese right now. Besides the fact that these cats are not exercising enough, they often are eating too much as well. Especially when you're making the last mistake and your cat is understimulated and bored, a constantly full food bowl can be all too tempting, allowing your cat to just eat all day and pack on weight. So if you'd like to help your cat maintain a healthy body weight and lead a happier, healthier life, get rid of the bottomless bowl of food and instead offer small, discreet meals multiple times a day. Offering as many as six meals throughout the day is going to not only help you to control your cat's calorie intake, but keep your mind engaged as well. My fourth big mistake is letting your cat's microchip information go out of date. So having your cat microchipped as a kitten is one of the best steps you can take towards ensuring that if they wander off or something happens to them, you will be able to be reunited. However, simply having your cat microchipped as a kitten is not always enough. If your cat goes missing and is then brought into a shelter or a vet who's able to scan their microchip, but the information on that microchip is out of date, then you've missed an opportunity to be reunited with your cat. Anytime you're moving or your contact information changes, you want to make sure to log in to your microchip registry account 
or contact the registry and make sure that all of that information gets updated as it's one of the best things you can do to increase your chances of being reunited with your cat if they ever go missing. My fifth mistake is getting your cat declawed. So declawing is certainly less common than it used to be. So this is not one of the most common mistakes, but it is one of the biggest mistakes. Remember that declawing involves cutting off the tips of your cat's fingers, so the first joint, it is more than simply removing the claws. And while many cats can live successful, happy lives after declawing with minimal pain, other cats experience complications of the operation and they will develop behavioral issues as well. They may have issues using the litter box and the lack of stimulation from natural scratching and clawing behavior may lead to those behavioral issues as well. So if you want to give your cat the best quality of life, I would recommend avoiding declawing and allowing them to experience their claws in an appropriate way. My sixth mistake is giving your cat improperly balanced homemade food. So a homemade diet for your cat can be really tempting and it can be a great option, but a lot can go wrong when you're making your cat's food at home. There was a review done of recipes published online for homemade cat food, and it found that the majority of them were improperly balanced. They did not provide enough nutrition to uh, allow a cat to thrive, eating this as their sole source of nutrition long-term. And this included recipes that had been apparently formulated by vets. If you do choose to make homemade cat food, make sure that you're using a recipe that has undergone some sort of analytical testing. So it's a recipe that has been prepared according to certain specifications and then sent to a lab for analysis and compared nutritionally against some sort of established guidelines for feline nutrition. So bottom line is, if you choose to make your cat homemade food, make sure to be careful. And similarly, when buying commercial diets, make sure that those diets are nutritionally complete and balanced. And my last mistake, which is really possibly the biggest mistake on this list, is ignoring signs of pain and illness. One of the kind of scary things about having a cat is that they can't uh, tell us in our language if they're feeling bad. Forrest, how are you feeling? Sometimes the way that our cat will tell us they're feeling sick or in pain can be really subtle, um, especially if you're not super familiar with feline body language and the way that cats communicate with us. So for instance, a cat could be sitting with their head kind of jutting out a little bit further than usual, or they might be urinating a little bit more than usual. And these signs can be easy to miss. Often a cat's chronic digestive issues are kind of dismissed as frequent hairballs or uh, the cat is just a puker. So you need to learn the signs of illness and pain in your cat and treat them appropriately. In many cases, the issues that can become really serious for our cats are things that can be caught early and controlled over time. So you want to one, become very attuned to your cat's body language and the signs of illness in cats. You can learn more about those in Dr. Sarah Wooten's video on signs of illness in cats. I'll put a link to that in the description. In addition to being very vigilant and aware of the signs your cat is showing you, uh, it is a good idea to have your cat checked up regularly. It's recommended that adult cats go to the vet about once a year. Once they become seniors, it can be a good idea to have them going into the vet twice a year. And this way you can catch things early that you might otherwise just not notice. Uh, I would love to hear what your biggest mistake as a cat owner has been. Um, where do you think you've slipped up? I think it would be really helpful to share that in the comments and maybe uh, encourage others to not make the same mistakes with their cats. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.